Wow. I just came down to a different section of the falls and again casting a small spinner, trying to get it out into the wind. Had a nice steelhead just smash it. And I got a feeling I got to go a little bit downstream with it because it took out about uh, 50 or 60 yards of line. It's slowly actually working its way up, so I'm just going to hold on a sec here. This is so exciting when you're dealing with uh, adverse conditions, fast water, fresh run fish. They've got so much energy. You can probably hear that wind. It is right in my face, and I want to make sure I've got my drag set right. That fish hit out here, went all the way down past these rocks, and just came back up. So I'm very thankful. Let me see if I can hold it in this current. Man, I don't know what to do here. If I come down, it might go around the corner. I've already lost one fish. Look at, you can see from my rod tip, the head shakes. They've got so much power. This isn't the best place to land it because it's a pretty fast run here, even though it doesn't look that fast. Okay, good, it's coming up into the rock area here. Look at this. Man, these things are so unpredictable. Look at, big head shakes. Wow. I mean, that roar of the falls is such a nice sound. I look forward to it. Sometimes when I have people join me down here, you gotta yell to one another if you're more than about 10, 15 feet apart. I can see that spinner flashing when that fish turns upstream. I gotta just take it easy here. Nice silver fish. Oh, can't imagine if it was sunny out. I'd probably see every detail of these fish fighting. You see how bright it is. Look at what a gorgeous fish. Ah. I tried putting a, a little number three Vibrex on with the chartreuse bell because it's so dark out. And I think when the fish comes up, you can see the silver and chartreuse. So those fish can really see it in that deep water. When you get out here, you know, about uh, 30, 40 yards, it's probably, I'm guessing, 50 to 150 feet deep. So we're talking deep water. Look at that. What a gorgeous sight. I don't know if it's ready yet. <laughs> Saw the net. They have such good vision. That's why it's so important sometimes to downsize your lures and to try different colors. Because sometimes they're very picky. And they see so much detail. So I think one of the reasons why the fishing has been so good with the artificials today is the low light conditions. Because they can't see as much detail as if it was really bright. This is awesome to be out here, mid-November, ah, big head shakes. You know, there's only one place in the world with this scenery, with those magnificent falls in the background, and it's right here on the Niagara River, Niagara Falls, Ontario. Okay, I don't know if this time it's going to, oh, that is a good-sized fish. Wow, great fight. Oh, the spinner just came out of its mouth. Man, I had my hands full there. Let's see, now it's going to take the spinner out. See, the nice thing about this mesh is the hooks will go into the mesh, obviously, because, uh, you know, it's got about a, I'm guessing, a quarter inch diameter, but it won't hook the mesh. When you're using artificial lures, especially with more than one treble, this is just one treble. I just gotta be patient because sometimes the line twists around when the fish head shakes. So I wanna make sure that fish stays wet there, just like that. You know what, I'm gonna give you a, a nice look at this fish and then I'll worry about the, taking the spinner out later. This guy's like a football. No wonder he's so hard to hold. Can you tell I'm fishing at the base of Niagara Falls with the roar and everything? Here, I'll give you a better look. How's that? Nice white background, hopefully it's not overexposed. Look at how gorgeous that fish is. Beautiful fish. And it's right here in Niagara Falls.